Americans feel like that they're losing control uh, every, everywhere that's uh, around them. And so my advice would be is how do you, or my question would be for the audience is, how do you plan to stay in control of your, of your life during retirement with all of this uncertainty that's floating around? And you can do that. Um, you know, there are bubbles everywhere, as you discussed earlier. That, you know, as you said, there's geopolitical risk. Just this week, uh, the Federal Reserve has started to raise interest rates again. And what kind of impact is that going to have on the markets for a long term? Is that going to have some big effect? So, again, the more you can have thought through before you retire, the better off you will be when you hit retirement. Uh, you don't want to be blindsided by something that, that you did not expect. So sit down, sit down with, a, uh, with someone such as ourselves and can talk you through what to expect during retirement that you may not be, that you may not be expecting to see or you may be blindsided by. Yesterday I was talking with someone, it was our first meeting and she's 64 years old and she's, she knows that she needs to be signing up for Medicare fairly soon. So I grabbed our, uh, uh, Medicare advisor and I brought him in the room to make an introduction and they chatted for a little bit, set up an appointment and she's coming back to see him. How far out in front of retirement should people be actively engaging with a financial planner? Oh, I would say uh, six months is a good time um, to, ke to start those conversations. Um, and there, there's nothing wrong with even nine months. So it just depends on the person. And I oftentimes say it this way, um, what is their comfort level? Whatever mm -hmm. makes them comfortable is a good place to start as long as they don't wait till the last minute. And I'll tell people, you, you know what, with, when it comes to variable annuities, you, you got to be like that board game clue that we played when we were kids to find out it was Colonel Mustard with the candlestick in the library. You got to find this piece of information on this page and this piece of information on that page. And Larry's right. We can either we can call the company and we can and, and that's one way of doing it. We can do it through prospectuses. We've got several tools that we can use to try to peel the layers of the onion that be, that is variable annuities to, to help people understand what's going on. Once people understand what's going on and what they're getting for what they're going on, it may be a good thing for them. It may be a bad thing for them. When do you want to know what's going on before it costs you lots and lots of money? or after the fact. What is the basic difference between traditional Medicare and an Advantage plan? Yeah, um, that's a really great question that you asked me, Rick. Uh, it's really funny because there's a lot of media and advertising out right now about Medicare in general, and it's very hard to distinguish the difference between when they're talking about a Medicare Advantage plan versus a Medicare supplement. So when you look at a Medicare supplement, that is what I call a pay as you know. You kind of have a set monthly rate that you are paying whether or not you are using those uh, medical benefits, whether you're going to see the doctor or not, I'm paying a designated amount each month. Where a Medicare Advantage system differs in the fact that you have co-payments built in all along the way and they often come with little to no premiums. So if you're not going to see the doctor, you actually may not have any monthly cost for your medical coverage. When or at what point or time in life should a person establish a will or a state plan? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, it, it, it really depends. One of the things you're looking at is you, there's two stages. One is when you have young children. And, you know, uh, having a state plan can designate guardians for those children can designate guardians for their money. So all of that, uh, so that at that point, it's a good position to, to plan for your estate. And it's important, I say. Now, most people don't do that, unfortunately. And so if something goes wrong, they leave mess behind. Uh, and then, you know, I would say once you are, and again, there's no age, but typically people, when they hit 50 or 60, they become more, alert to their mortality and so they begin to make plans there is not a specific good time but i think those two are important times where you should be looking at doing a state plan in uh, helping someone assisting someone with their retirement tax planning mm -hmm. uh, i mean there's a lot of cpas that maybe don't do tax planning they do accounting they mm -hmm. do tax preparing mm -hmm. What's one of the biggest surprises that you see in clients' eyes 
when it comes to tax planning and retirement that they maybe weren't even aware of? I think the fact that they can make decisions that will change the final outcome. You know, people are often, you know, kind of uh, in a in a kayak going down the rapids, right? And they're just kind of at the mercy. They feel like they're at the mercy of the the waves and the the rapids and and whatnot. And in fact, when people find out, no, they actually have a paddle in their hand and they can make decisions and do things intentionally that changes their outcome. I think is a often a pleasant surprise for people. <music> 